I have, I have a very simple task today. I'm here today for one purpose, and it's to endorse Barack Obama to be the next president of the United States. We have been having an extraordinary time over the last several days here in Pennsylvania. I mean, we have visited old steel plants. We have visited chocolate factories. That was good. I fed a calf with a big bottle, uh, and that went all right. <laughs> and then we went bowling, which didn't go so well. There was like an eight-year-old kid who was like, here, uh, Senator, let me show you. <laughs> and in Pittsburgh, I had Jerome Bettis and Franco Harris on the bus. So uh, I grew up with the, I grew up watching the Steelers. Those Franco Harris still looks good. What I love about you know these kinds of uh, bus tours is it, you really get a chance to listen to people. I want to thank all of you from the Greensburg community for taking the time to be with me uh, here today. Uh, this is a town hall meeting which means that I don't want to spend all my time talking. I actually want to spend some time listening and answering questions uh, and getting ideas from you in terms of what you'd like to see uh, from the next president and where you'd like to move the country. I'm a full-time student at IEP, and I'm studying political science there. And uh, one of the first words that I you know, learned in that department um, was the word oligarchy. And um, there's a possibility here that if your opponent is elected, um, and when's the primary that we could have 28 years of two families in the White House? And I was just concerned, you know, of what <laughs> your campaign might say to that. You know, I, I, Senator Clinton has said, and, and I, I agree with her, she should be judged on her own merits. Uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, if she is, if she is going to be the best president and does the best job, then you, or if, if you think that, then you should vote for her. Now, the flip side of it is, is that, you know, I think every candidate then has to take responsibility for uh, for your track record. So one of the things I have been concerned about with Senator Clinton is she likes to take credit for all the things that happened under the Clinton White House that were good, but doesn't take credit for the things that were bad. That's my only concern is that, you know, that if you want to uh, take credit for some of those accomplishments, and there were some real accomplishments. I mean, the Clinton administration did some good things. But then you've got to take responsibility for the fact that some things did not go so well. Uh, I do believe, though, that part of the reason we've done well in this campaign is that we, we've said the politics that happened in the 90s, the arguing all the time, the real nasty sort of anything goes, whatever it takes kind of politics, that that's not getting stuff done. And I think the American people, they don't care about people arguing back and forth on cable TV. They want to figure out how are you going to get gas prices down and how are you going to get folks health insurance. primary has gone on 
a little bit longer. You know, there have been people who have been voicing some frustration. They've been saying, oh, you know, the campaigns are going at it back and forth. And, you know, we, we feel like that initial hopefulness that we had now is, is kind of slipping away. I, I want everybody to understand that this has been a great contest, great for America. It's engaged and involved people like never before. I think it's terrific that Senator Clinton's supporters have been as passionate as my supporters have been. Because that means the people are invested and engaged in this process. And I am absolutely confident that when this primary season is all over, Democrats will be united. Because we understand what's at stake in this election. I have the greatest admiration for the service of John McCain. He is a genuine American hero. John McCain is clinging to the past. He is running for George Bush's third term. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is, how are we going to debate John McCain? Do we want to debate John McCain with somebody who agreed with him on the war in Iraq? Or do we want to debate him with somebody who had the courage to stand up and say this is a bad idea? I believe that the Democrats will be unified as soon as this nomination is settled. We will be unified because we understand that we are not going to be clinging to the policies of the past. We are the party of the future. We don't want to look backwards. We are marching forward. That's what's at stake in this election. That's what this campaign has been about, and that's what I want to bring about as President of the United States of America.